Minnesota is home to extraordinary entrepreneurs. And they're creating business and services and products that help us connect to each other. They help us connect to our clients. They help us connect with our kids. And they help us connect with the outdoors. And they're developing leaders. They're helping kids with robotics and coding. They're helping us live healthy lives that are debt free. And they're ha helping us have a voice in politics. You as entrepreneurs, as the founders of startups, have an exciting journey ahead of you that is also gonna be challenging. You have the ability to create a healthy and diverse economy that puts our region on the map in a global economy. While this is challenging, we are here for you. The James J. Hill Center is a 501c3 nonprofit that connects businesses, entrepreneurs, and the community. And we are here with you every step of the way. Just like it was for the business owner who came in after doing hours and hours of research on their own, at home, alone. Within 45 minutes, they had 10 times the amount of research and information that they could find by Googling and on their own. Or the nonprofit professional who needed help finding grants to fund social programs so that they could create programming through their organization, they could do that here. Now, you as entrepreneurs and as the founders of startups, you understand that starting and running a business is difficult. According to Forbes, 90% of startups fail. That's a huge number. You also understand, most of you as Minnesotans, that we have a risk-adverse culture and it's hard to be an entrepreneur in this state. That's why it's important for us to create a space and a community of like-minded people who have entrepreneurial thinking and can help us understand the risks and help support us when we do fail. We believe that the James J. Hill Center and the resources that we have available here can help you minimize that risk and increase your rate of success. We have the largest collection of business research publicly available in all of Minnesota. Whether you're a new business and venture doing market research and building your business plan, or you're a mature business who's going through growth or wants to launch a new product or service, you can do all of that research and here. And the entire time, you have access to expert business researchers who can help you along the way. Each week, you can harness a vast array of knowledge from local experts that cover everything from social media, PR, marketing, business leadership, mar business leadership, finance, how to start a business, when to start a business, and even when to exit your business. Every week, right here. Or maybe you need funding. We can help you with that too. You can find every venture capitalist firm and private market investor through the databases located here at the James J. Hill Center as you look to grow or start your business. And of course, you have access to our most important asset. That's you. You just heard from Luke from Abamath. He was here about a year ago and pitched to this very audience. The feedback that you gave to him and because he listened, allowed him to pivot in his company, and now he's on a tra trajectory of growth that you just saw. Because of the feedback that you gave him, and because he chose to listen. A lot of you know Sean Dunn. Sean Dunn has become a, our resident entrepreneurial expert because of the conversations that you have had with him, and because of the conversations you have had with other founders who've been standing right up here where I am. He now has a mission to connect you with the people, the resources, and the networks that you need to grow your business, because he understands that business is more than an equation. It's about people, and it's about relationships. Genuine Hero, a startup that's launching a new television series, just did their auditions here at the James J. Hill Center. The applicants who came in to audition for that micropilot came in thinking that's all they were gonna do. And what they found was mentorship in each other, a connection to other entrepreneurs, and a connection to the resources here at the Hill. We've spent the last year having conversations with individuals, companies, nonprofits, meetup groups, in order to build a wide-ranging web and infrastructure to help you be successful, <coughs> to 
make sure that there's value added content out there and that people are looking at the future of our region and how we can join together to make that happen. Our role moving forward is to leverage this community to support you and help you start your businesses and grow your businesses. We like to say that The Hill is about a 100 year old startup. We launched a lot of our programs within the last year. We're a scrappy bunch, high, very passionate, and have a lot of expertise on staff. We have our minimal viable products that you've seen, you've come here, we've iterated on those, and we've, we've changed. Now what we're doing is looking at how do we scale and how do we grow programming and services that are gonna support you this year and for the next 50 years. And we're gonna do that with information and input from all of you and your participation. Because without you, this space is just that. It's just a magnificent space. This is yours. This is a home for entrepreneurship and it's a home for entrepreneurs. And with your participation and your leadership, we can create something great here. We can provide the resources that you need and other entrepreneurs need to build wealth for themselves and also wealth for the entire community. You're the leaders. You're the job creators. You're the ones that are gonna create the answers to our needs. So join us. Fill this space with content, with resources, with your expertise, with entrepreneurial vitality. And help us figure out how to fund cutting edge summits and workshops and the resources we need to build great businesses, a great economy, and a great Minnesota. So work here, learn here, and build here. Thank you. Any questions? Can you get married here? You can get married here. In fact, uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit, and one of the ways that we um, earn revenue is by doing for-profit uh, revenue-generating events, like weddings. We do about 70 weddings a year, as well as corporate events. Yes. This will be on video, yes, absolutely. Would you like to watch it again? Yeah, yep. There's a One Million Cups YouTube channel, um, but I, I'll send it out. Yep. I think, yes, uh, Barry. How do, you, uh, how do you scale this up? So you've got, what, 35, 40 people here today. How do you get it to 200? Or even bigger, do you scale it up remotely and allow people to access it not only in downtown St. Paul, but elsewhere in the metro, the state, the country, or the world, for that matter? I think our, uh, our scaling is going to be local at first. Uh, we, need, we are here. We're physically here. We're geographically here. Uh, we can have a statewide influence. But to do that, it's going to be uh, participation through, uh, with groups listed on here and them holding entrepreneurial events in the space. So I believe our work as an organization is figuring out how do we actually fund this space and have it open at 7 p.m. at night, at 9 p.m. at night, on the weekends, so that we can host entrepreneurial events that are gonna draw in large groups of entrepreneurs. Uh, you some, like Minnesota Cup, Mobilize MN, um, the, meetup entrepreneur, the Minnesota Entrepreneurial Meetup Group, they, they draw in large groups of, of entrepreneurs. They're also all over the cities. I think that this space can be seen as a space where things happen and people identify us and, and our brand and what we do as a gathering place that's facilitating conversation and innovation within our entrepreneur uh, network. Yes, Jim. Absolutely, yeah. It, it really has to spread by word of mouth and inviting people. That's a great point. Thanks, Jim. Yes, sir. What, if anything, has changed that has led to the growth to this point? Uh, what's changed that has led to the growth to this point is the assembling of the team that we have here. 
Uh, myself, Liz, uh, Siri, and, and uh, Leah are back there, our librarians, along with Danielle and Barry here. Uh, I mean, it, it's us, it's, it's the people within the space. It's our motivation, our passion to want to build this community. Uh, we're the ones who've started the programs in this last year and are looking at growing them under the guidance of our board and, and our leadership. Did that answer your question? Okay. You might have already um, answered this, but is this publicly funded or? This is a, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. So we're a, we're a nonprofit. Uh, we're an operating library. Many of you know that. Uh, we're a business library. All of our research, all of our databases and books focus on, on business. And so we're funded uh, via an endowment, uh, donations, grants, and sponsorships. In order to stay open and, and to grow, we need to build those more traditional forms of, of nonprofit revenue, uh, grants, sponsorships, primarily. Yes, What's Wendy. What's your biggest hindrance to growth? What do you, what do you see in your position? I think our, our, I think our biggest hindrance to growth is that we as a Twin Cities region have a lot going on, a lot of exciting things for entrepreneurs in business. We're also not really good at corralling that and branding that together and, and working cohesively. Um, we are really a neutral agency. We're a nonprofit, we're not a for-profit. Uh, people, anybody can access our services, not just members of a particular group. We're not demographic focused like some economic organizations or uh, geographic focused like a lot of chambers are. And so I really do believe that the James J. Hill Center can be that entity that can help gather all of those things together because we're this neutral, non-biased agency. But the, but the hindrance is that there's just a lot going on and making sure that we move in the same direction is really difficult. Is there anybody here who does what you do, non not charging, co-working space, like who can come and go and do research? Is there anybody comparable with this? There is nobody else that does what we do in terms of business research as a 501c3 nonprofit that is freely open to the public. We're the only ones in the state. Yeah, good question. Other questions? Yes, Tim. What has been the acceptance of the larger business community? You mentioned sponsorships. Yeah. Yeah, you know, when we talk with people, when we go out there, people are excited. I mean, they're excited. Th this is a treasure. I mean, the James J. Hill Center, just in terms of it, uh, is, it's an architectural gem. It's going to be here. Uh, we, one, feel like we're stewards of the space and want to make sure that it's kept up and available to the public. But people are excited that things are happening and that there's growth here. And so there's a lot of interest in getting involved. Uh, making it to the next step where they can get involved financially is where, really where we're at. So uh, making sure that we're launching programs and getting them engaged uh, to make sure that they're, we can run them and operate them is kind of where we're going. And I think there's a lot of people that are interested. Uh, you can see in, on this slide, I mean, literally, these are all, I've, I've talked with people in all of these groups or they participate in programming. John from Drake Bank has been great. Um, he's, Drake Bank has been here two times now doing stuff. Um, Bremer Bank, they're great partners. They were just here this morning. Uh, the Pioneer Press, we just had our first article cut medical bills. David Holtz uh, was just in this last Sunday. They've been great partners. I mean, people are really interested in, in getting involved. Um, the, the thing that, the other hindrance, I guess, uh, that's holding us back is just making sure that the space is available so that we can do things. Right now, we operate Monday through Thursday, open to the public, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. If we really want to make this a vital space where things are happening, it has to be open a lot broader range of hours, and that's going to take money. Can I just drill into that just a little bit? Yep. So when you say be involved, does that mean they actually host events here or they sponsor events here? Yep. What does it mean to be involved for, the for these? Strip? It, it can happen in a, in a couple ways. So uh, one, they can, uh, we can co-create something together. So like the panel discussion this morning is a good example of that. In here in the staff, we don't necessarily have the expertise on every single startup entrepreneurial uh, piece of knowledge that you're gonna wanna know about. And so we need to bring those experts into this space. And we can do that by listening to you and what you need and then reaching into this community and putting workshops like this together. We also would be interested in 
uh, companies and organizations coming in and helping facilitate summits and conferences around entrepreneurial initiatives in collaboration with the James J. Hill Center. Uh, those will be looking at, um, is in terms of a partnership, helping create the content, but also helping fund the event specifically. So it's sponsored by it. Yep, exactly. Yep, precisely. Mm -hmm. Yes, Matt. Outside of funding, what's your biggest hurdle in providing library resources at, a, at more hours or more days? Than you? Uh, that's a good question. Other than funding? Outside of funding. Outside of funding? It would be awareness of the importance of of the reference library and the research that you can do here. I mean, every library in the nation is looking at reimagining itself and how it stays relevant in a digital age. And we're doing the exact same thing. Many libraries are creating programs outside of uh, just people coming in to get books, and we're doing that same thing. And so it's a little bit probably about awareness and helping people understand really exactly what they can get here. And it's incredible the depth of information that you can find in our databases working with our business librarians. So a larger microphone and a clear message, helping people understand that is the next barrier after funding for staying open hours. We need to increase the volume of people in the space uh, using our, our reference services. Yeah, yeah. I have a question and a comment, please. The question is, do you think that location is a problem at all for getting people to the, the center here? Yes, I do, absolutely. Uh, down, I mean, being downtown centric, one, uh, whether in either downtown, uh, you sometimes have trouble getting people in. People are afraid of what parking's gonna be like, that sort of thing. St. Paul in general doesn't have a great brand around uh, startup initiatives and programming for entrepreneurs. A lot of that seen, is seen on the Minneapolis side of the river. And so having to kind of swim up current against that is challenging also. And then the comment, I would encourage you when you do events like this, um, is it possible to pull out a few volumes or some resources to have right up front so we can actually see, if you come here to use this library, look what we've got. This is what you got. And then you can touch it and it becomes more real, I think. Yeah, that's so a, that, that is a good research. idea. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yes, Travis. So I remember like when I was, I went to St. Cloud uh, for business school and they even referenced this and I remember back in high school doing marketing and DECA, which was a program for marketing, they also referenced this, but never once did they ever say go here for this project or go here for this assignment. It was just one place you could go for information. So I'm curious and you're saying you wanted to bring more people in, yeah. how are you reaching out to them? to maybe inspire them to come here? Do you have field trips that come here? Do you have like college uh, partnerships Groups. maybe? or uh, We've started those. Uh, we've been working with the Minnesota Workforce Center. Uh, that's one group that we specifically have been uh, targeting and that's mostly around job seekers. This is my backup slide. Um, we, about 32% of the people who come in to use our space consider themselves to be job seekers. And they've come in and done tours with our librarians to learn about our databases and, and our resources. Uh, we've talked with, we have an ongoing relationship with Carlson School and might be doing something with them in the fall. Uh, we've also talked with St. Thomas and uh, they're focused really internally with their entrepreneurial program right now. But we are interested in how do we get groups like that in to, to learn about our resources. Leah does regular uh, informational workshops on our databases, how to use the research. And those are uh, free and open to the public too, but it's just, it's getting those groups here. So yeah, you're absolutely right. We need to do more of that. Uh, the, and in terms of outreach and how we do that, uh, we do that through our social media. We have a really active social media um, it's increased by 60% in the last eight months. That's largely due to Kristen Alberg, who sits at the front desk, she, who does most of our social media, and she's great at it. Uh, and then we have our regular e email uh, publications that go out twice a week, and we have a website that has an uh, updated blog with information about what's going on. And then outside of that, it's a lot of guerrilla marketing. I mean, we're bootstrapping ourselves in a lot of ways, uh, even though we have this magnificent space. And so a lot of it's just that guerrilla marketing of, of networking, having conversations with people, building those relationships. Hopefully they're spreading, helping us spread the word. And then one last question, or one more question is, as a 501c3, a lot of times people want to volunteer. Is there any opportunities for people to come here and get involved volunteering? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, from helping be at the front desk and welcoming guests to helping us create new programming, I mean, and, and all the way in between. Uh, right now, I'm working with Sean Dunn and a couple of other people and looking at how do we do kind of a very uh, 
rudimentary, very micro incubator slash accelerator for individuals going through one million cups where they basically get to sit down with a panel of experts for four, a four hour block of time and really delve into their business. And that's all because Sean came up to me like, hey Lee, do you think people would be interested in this? I said, yes, in fact, I know people would be interested in this, so let's make it happen. And it's really on, on them to provide that expertise and, and the organization for it. But yeah, all that can happen within this space. You mentioned marketing. That's a great question, Wendy. Our marketing budget is pretty much zero uh, currently. And so we don't do any traditional marketing. Uh, it's all been through relationship building. Uh, and the, in the forms of relationship building that have been really successful is with the Pioneer Press and the weekly article that goes out. We also do a weekly segment on WCCO Radio with Jordana Green, which has also been really great. Uh, we don't do any advertising um, or, or and oh, we because we're a nonprofit, we also get to use um, AdWords for nonprofits, a granting program. So we have that role in too. So we, we found some ways. So you've done all this with zero dollars. That yes, yes. Thank you. Yes, Jim. Uh, Kaufman right now doesn't support us financially. The One Million Cups program is a Kaufman program, and so they produce all the collateral and kind of that basic infrastructure and publicity, but that's about it. One more question out there, anybody? No, well, I think your time's up. All right. <laughs> thank you all for, uh, thank you. Thanks everybody for being here today, uh, for letting me pitch to you. This was a fantastic experience. To Luke for coming back for our panel discussion. Next week we have our last in the funder series and it's all about venture capitalists. Matt Ottersider, are you still in the room? No, Matt Ottersider will be here along with Ryan Brocher from Matchstick and Patrick Meenan from Arthur Ventures. And uh, the moderator is gonna be Nate from Sticky Albums. Uh, who has a great business and is very sharp. So it's going to be an exciting conversation. And then uh, David Woodbury is going to be pitching right after that. So I, I hope to see you all at 8 a.m. next week for our last funder school. And stick around, use our resources, talk with our librarians, drink coffee. And uh, thanks, everybody. Have a good rest of your day. <laughs>